Arroyo. And these recordings do get added to our Inside Real Estate YouTube channel. So I'll point out within KV Core, uh, if you <laughs> haven't explored our live training calendar, you'll find it right here on the right hand side in your training module on the dashboard. And when you go to click there, our success meetups are held every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You can find them by choosing the time zone which best applies to you, scrolling down to that date and clicking to go and register. I do want to mention Tuesday and Thursday sessions tend to stick to KV Core basics, tools built within the platform. And Wednesdays can be a little bit more advanced. They're held by our done for you services specialist, Heather. And she might go into uh, you know, more topics of you know, how to design something and say Canva to add to your website or how to create a Facebook lead ad and connect those leads over to KD Core. Um, so those Wednesday topics can be a little bit more advanced as they may go without or uh, outside the platform to explore more options as well. All right, but yes, uh, they are recorded. And the reason I pointed out this live training calendar is if you're not familiar, there is a sneaky link to our YouTube channel here. Of course, you can also go directly to YouTube, type in Inside Real Estate to also find our YouTube channel. Uh, but I always like to direct you this way. And just as a little pro tip, uh, if you're new to KV Core, highly recommend checking out our playlist page on the YouTube channel, as we do have entire videos in our Mastering KV Core Tools for Success playlist, entire videos on landing pages, squeeze pages, smart campaigns. So if you just want an hour long video devoted to that, that's a great one for you. And I know someone mentioned in the chat, can we access earlier recordings? You absolutely can through our KV Core Success Meetups playlist. And I'll go ahead and just for fun, I'll pop that in the chat for you guys as well. All right. Additionally, before we wrap up these housekeeping items, I like to also mention that Inside Real Estate has a Facebook discussion group. We try to make a regular habit of posting there what the topics will be for every given week. Um, and we do also often post in you know some past recordings to the Facebook group as well. And this would be a good place to jump on in. So here we see some featured past success meetup recordings here. Um, you know, this is a great one to go and check out not only about, you know, new news on KV Core, but there's a lot of people chiming in here, sharing their success stories, uh, you know, asking for suggestions, best avenue for obtaining leads, where did you get your last two closings. So uh, a really great group to join in there if you want to join our community. I'm going to go ahead and share that out in the chat with you guys as well. I was hoping to see, oh, let's see, our success meetups for this week. If you're curious what the Wednesday and Thursday sessions will be, uh, tomorrow's session will be about mass emails branded to your brokerage or your uh, business. And additionally, Thursday will be about scheduling emails smarter. So getting into that scheduled mass email topic here today. Um, I might also touch on that just a tiny bit here today. I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, uh, but that we might dive into that just a little bit today. But today's session is the Memorial Day special. I want to talk a little bit about updating your website for the holiday and a little bit about posting, creating some social posts. We can do something like a scheduled mass email, you know, time depending, we might dive into ways that you could use the holiday to, uh, you know, jazz up your landing pages, your squeeze pages to post out as well. Um, if this is not your first time with us, you may have noticed we do tend to create some specials for various holidays throughout the year. I apologize, there wasn't a Mother's Day special this year, um, but maybe next year we'll create one for uh, our success meetups. Um, I should also probably introduce myself. My name is Mariel Ortiz. I'm a product trainer here with Inside Real Estate. I teach a lot of our Tuesday success meetups, a lot of our orientations, building your pipeline. Uh, before becoming a trainer, uh, I was one of our lead configuration specialists, the team that helps with bulk imports of contact. So any import questions, feel free to shoot those my way. Uh, but with that, 
I also want to share out one last link in the chat, and we're really going to dive in here today. And this is a handy guide. I tend to create a guide for every success meetup that I teach, uh, just so you guys have quick links to the various support articles and things that we discussed. So I'm going to grab this link. I'm going to share it out in the chat. Again, this is going to say, it's going to say agenda. It's going to have the link. And you should be able to simply click on that link in your Zoom chat, open this up on your screen, and I might bookmark this one for later. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about messaging for the holiday. I've actually pre-created a Memorial Day advanced email, uh, you know, advanced editor email template for you guys that you can simply, uh, you know, grab yourself a copy schedule when you want it to be sent out, or you can send it out on the day if you choose to. Um, and that's pre-created for you. You're welcome to make your own custom, customization, custom, customizations. Not sure why that was a tongue twister today. Your own edits to it, whatever you'd like. But we'll dive into that for the first uh, half of today. Um, additionally, I'll talk a tiny bit about website edits. Uh, just always like to change mine up you know, either seasonally or for a holiday. If you didn't know, you don't have to have just a video or sorry, just a standard image for your KD Core website background. You can do a video if you want to. So I've got a flag waving for today. We'll talk about how I added that to my KD Core websites. Um, and then additionally, you know, the time, time depending, we might talk a little bit about posting landing pages, squeeze pages, text codes, our landing pages. I do believe we have a template that's pre-created that has kind of a not Memorial Day specifically, but a flag background that you could use for the holiday. And then additionally, I challenge you to you, you know, review the attached articles in this guide, you know, review the tools we discussed today and get creative on your own, you know, updating your KD core for the holiday. I also like to create a little spot down here at the bottom. I usually try to make sure I pop in today's recording link here as well. While it will be posted to the YouTube channel, uh, sometimes I get access to that link before it winds up on YouTube. So I'll usually add it to this, uh, this doc as well. So if you have this bookmarked or you just leave it on your computer, you know, a couple hours from now, you'll probably see this updated. All right, with that, um, I do also want to mention, you know, while we got a lot that I have planned for today, uh, all success meetups are also open Q&A. So if you have questions about your Kiwi Core platform, feel free to pop those in the chat or Q&A, even if they're not directly related to what we're talking about here today. I'll try to find time to fit them into today's session as well, because I want you to feel comfortable that this is also, you know, a opportunity for you to get the answers to your questions. All right, now. Now, I first want to mention this sharing token on my screen. So sharing token, this is how I'm able to share this pre-created Memorial Day email template that I've made for, for you guys, uh, how you're able to add it all to your KD Core account. Oh, and absolutely, there is a way to create a monthly or bi-weekly newsletter in KD Core. You can schedule that ahead of time. Well, did you just... <laughs> so sorry, folks. I'm not sure where that sneeze came from, but I didn't get enough warming. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So yes, absolutely. Now you could create a campaign that was spaced um, where it sends mes messages uh, every month. You can decide the, the time frame on that. Or you can also use tools like our scheduled mass emailer uh, to create a newsletter. And that way you can do different messages uh, and choose the date that they're going out. So let's explore some of these options, okay? And then we'll talk about this, the sharing token and the template that I created for you guys. So uh, I mentioned messaging. There's a couple different ways you can send out a mass email and different ways you can set out of text as well through KB Core. If you're brand new to the platform and you just want to send maybe a mass email to your contacts right now, as soon as you've added them in, in your CRM, 
there's always the option to send mass emails and mass texts. Um, you can go and adjust your rows to up to, on your end, I believe it's up to 250 contacts at a time. Uh, in my demo account, unfortunately, we can only see 10 at a time, but you can adjust the rows, check off everybody on this list. If you really want to be efficient about it, there's also a filter in your CRM. If you head on over to uh, contact details, I believe, and you scroll on down, you can specifically just check for those that have an email, filter those out and you could send an email right now in the moment. So that's one way that you could send this out. Now today we'll probably talk more about scheduling mass emails and how you could use this in say a smart campaign. But hey, if you forget to set this up ahead of time and you know it winds up being Memorial Day and you haven't sent out a message, uh, you know this is something you could do really quick from your CRM. Now, from the marketing tab in KV Core, if we head on over to the schedule mass email tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and click get started. Now, this is one that I usually use for holiday messaging. Uh, this is also a good one to use if you wanna create a newsletter. And I can just go and click on schedule email in the right hand corner. Again, we're in marketing, we're in scheduled mass emails. And I'm just clicking on schedule email in the corner. We do have support articles on this topic as well, included in my agenda that I popped in the chat for you guys. And when I'm scheduling an email, just a quick run through, I'm first choosing who I'm sending the email to. I can choose all contacts from a saved filter in KV Core. So you noticed in the CRM, I clicked on that filters tab and I filtered, for example, for um, all people with an email. That could be a saved filter if I decide to actually save that filter. I could also get really specific with my saved filters. So I could choose all contacts that are buyers with an email um, that you know, viewed a listing on my website or had specific search criteria. You get really specific with those filters in your CRM. If you've not done it before, I encourage you to save a few that are relevant to your business. I could also pull up everybody with a hashtag. So a little pro tip, if you're organizing your database, it might be worthwhile to add a hashtag to your contacts that you know you want to receive holiday messaging. If this isn't something you necessarily feel is appropriate for all of your users, adding in a hashtag like holiday card list, I think is one that I've had have in here. Holiday helps if you spell it right. There we go. Holiday card list. And that way I'm pulling up every contact with that um, it's not limited there. You know, I noticed in the, I mentioned in the CRM that I could just select 250 at a time at one time. But with this, you know, no matter how many people are on that hashtag, it's going to pull them all in here. Um, that's also a great pro tip. I know we skipped over Mother's Day. There was no Mother's Day special uh, this year, uh, but a great kind of pro tip for the future is you're getting in contact with your clients. If you know one of them is a mother, Maybe give them hashtag mother. It might be helpful next year if you're sending out Mother's Day messaging or create a card or something special for all the moms you know, it's gonna be easy to pinpoint them if they have a hashtag. And then additionally, I can choose to send contacts based on their status in KV Core. If you're brand new to KV Core, this is one of the first things that you definitely want to get familiar with. Uh, I do believe I have a link in my agenda to our KV Core dictionary that talks about a lot of the terminology we use here at KV Core. Um, and there's specifically a quick link to status. If you're not familiar with the different status options, I'll just go ahead and pop this in the chat for fun here. <laughs> there we go. But the status is, you know, if I want to grab, maybe I just want to send this message to all the contacts in my sphere, or maybe just all the, all my current clients or people I've say closed a deal with, I could pinpoint specific statuses. Another cool workaround is I could technically choose every status here and effectively choose all the contacts in my database. 
So another uh, possible option for you as well. I do want to encourage you, you know, you typically want to be a little bit more selective about who you're messaging. So not every single person in your contact list gets slammed with every single message you have to send. So sometimes it's nice to cater it directly to them, but just showing you that this is a, a possibility, something you could do through your scheduled mass email or tool. All right, now after you choose who you're sending it to, I'm gonna go back and we're, we're gonna choose holiday card list, why not? I get to choose the date that I want it to send. So this is gonna be really handy uh, if I wanna set this up today and then not think about it come Memorial Day, I can just choose the date. I believe Memorial Day is the 29th, uh, but I know a lot of people just kind of celebrate this as a long extended weekend. So I'm sure people are gonna get their email boxes flooded with Memorial Day messages, even on the 27th, 28th. Uh, sometimes it's also kind of a handy strategy to send out holiday messaging the day before or even the day after to kind of separate yourself from the pack. Just a thought. So I'm just going to set it for the 29th for fun here. I'm going to choose a time. I do want to mention here when you're choosing a time and I'm just going to choose 10 a.m. I do want to mention if you're emailing a large group of individuals throughout KV Core, KV Core will tend to split this up into batches just to help being detected as spam. So for that reason, even though it's choosing 10 a.m. as the time this is sending out, it's not guaranteed that all individuals will receive this message at 10 a.m. Some may receive it slightly later. Now. It's pretty easy here to create your own email message. You can type it directly in. Uh, if you're looking to build a newsletter, you can check out our templates. We have a newsletter template that you can actually you just type in newsletter in the template section. And it's gonna use what's called our advanced email editor tool, which allows you to pop in things like images and videos and buttons and other text, uh, besides just typing in a simple, you know, one off email. And so this is a nice one, you know, oh, there we go. Memorial Day article header. You just type in your text here, add in your own personal header, places for you to drop in your own, you know, photo images. So feel free to make this your own. Again, this is just kind of a template to get you started. So that is a potential option for you guys. Um, let's see. Someone said, I got a message when I sent a mass email. And I tried to follow with a mass text, alerting them to email. Got a message that you can only send mass text, email text a day. Is that a word around? So some of that is in place. The, the mass text message rule is in place there. Let me pull up an article as well. Um, so something about the, the mass text, yes, there is a rule in place, again, to help being detected as spam, I might refer back to that in a little bit here, um, to help being detected as spam, that one text a day is kind of a limit there, just so they're not overwhelmed with messaging, and that's per person. Um, so that is something that as is in place, I did, I was of the understanding that, you know, emails could be sent in addition to a text message. Um, I'm not sure if there is something specific to your brokerage. But yes, let's talk a little bit about templates. So again, that newsletter template, I believe should be pre-existing in all KV Core accounts. You should be able to type in the word newsletter in the template bar and pull up the KV Core newsletter template that I'm displaying here. But I mentioned I created a special template for you guys for Memorial Day. So I'm going to go ahead and type in, I created it for the success meetup. So it'll start with the letters SM for success meetup. And I'm going to go ahead and pull open the Memorial Day email template. Now I kept this pretty simple. Uh, the subject, when someone receives that email, is going to say, in remembrance of our heroes on this Memorial Day. And when they open up the email, we've got a little flag image. Let's remember our fallen service members, members with pride this Memorial Day. 
any warm wishes on this day of remembrance. And then I've added in some buttons here to allow them to search for homes for sale and get their home value. Now, something to mention about these buttons, when you use this template, you have to add in the links for these buttons for your site. I didn't want to add in the URL to my KV Core website because that's not going to help you if you're sending out this template. So I left the URL links blank, so it's going to be up to you to fill these out. And I'll also talk about some other options if you want to do additional edits to this template and kind of add your own content here. So search homes for sale to really get them to allow them to search for those homes. I want to direct them to the search tab of my website. I could also pop in a link for a squeeze page. That would be another way to do it as well. But for example, if I go to my Kiwi Core website and click on my search tab up here at the top, which it's usually going to be your Kiwi Core uh, domain name, uh, and then there we go, tab over. Now, I could direct them just to the search tab if I really want to kind of steer them um to you know specific listings i can go and i can filter for listings first or again i could make a squeeze page where i'm narrowing down the search criteria that they're going to be directed to um, so i would kind of direct a little bit i would narrow it down a little bit and then grab that url whatever you like for your search criteria wherever you want to push these users to if they were to click on your button and then in your email as you're editing this template you can actually click on that button, search homes for sale. And on the right hand side, we see that there's a link type and a box where I can add in my URL. So there we go. I just pop it in there. And that way, when they go to click, they're just redirected there. Um, while these buttons are pre created to send them to your, you know, for searching for homes or getting home value, I want to mention you can build up buttons for different purposes as well kind of cool besides just having them directed to an open web page you can have them send you an email uh you know give you a call send you a text message so if you want to use this to try to get someone to uh, book a meeting with you you could make a button change the text so it says uh book meeting now <laughs> and you know redirect them to your calendly page you could you know have the button say uh, text here to speak with me today, and you could have them send you a text message. So there's different ways that you could do this. For the home value, uh, same idea here. I just went to the sell page and I used that uh, URL instead. So it's going to be, again, your domain slash seller slash valuation. So that's where I would redirect them to. And again, you just pop that in the URL box. Um, I'm not going to save this as his because I don't want that to be, I don't want that to show up on yours when you guys use this, uh, this handy sheet that I made or it's handy template that I made. Now, again, this is just how it's set up uh, right now. You're welcome to add in additional content. If that photo seems a little bland to you, feel free to replace it with a video instead. Just go and drag that video wherever you like. You can add in a video URL from, say, YouTube. Now, additionally, I could go and I could add in things like social media links if I wanted to, uh, dynamic content, other buttons. Uh, so feel free to add in whatever you'd like to your emails to you know, make them a little bit spiffier. And I'm sorry, I noticed there's a lot of questions in the chat. I apologize. There's just one of me and many of you here today. Looks like we got close to 50 users on us on the call today. So I will go back and check those messages in just a second. But because of time, I want to just really quickly um, showcase how you can get this pre-created template I've created for you guys. So again, that template, you're going to have a what's called a sharing token and this agenda that I shared out in the chat. If I have anyone who joined a little bit late, let me share the agenda in the chat one more time in case you missed it.
There we go. All right, so with the sharing token, here's what you do to grab that template. You're actually gonna go to your marketing tab and to your smart campaigns. Now, this wasn't designed to be a full campaign. It's just designed to be a single email template. But while, you know, while I can't share a single email template with you directly through, say, the Schedule Mass emailer tool, I can share templates with you, email or text or otherwise, through a campaign. I can share the contents of a campaign with you. So here's how this would work. In your Smart Campaign section under the Marketing tab, on the right-hand side, there's your Add Campaign button. And just to the right of that, there is a little icon here. Uh, this is actually where you would go to add in, it's called a campaign token. So you would pop in, you'd go and you'd highlight this in the agenda, copy it, and you can pop that directly in here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take a couple minutes probably, but it's gonna add a campaign to your campaigns. It's called the, let me go pull it up here. It's gonna be called the uh, Memorial Day Email Templates uh, slash uh, MSM, again, for success meetups. And again, this is not meant to be used as a campaign. Uh, I've set it up with no start triggers, so it's not gonna trigger on any leads automatically. Um, and it's not going to send directly out to a lead. But what this is going to do is just by having this campaign in your system is it's now gonna be available in your template. So anywhere where you select a template, again, we showcased at the beginning, I can choose an email template in the smart CRM when I'm sending out a mass email. I can choose an email template uh, when I'm using the schedule mass email tool. I can also, you know, create my own campaign and insert templates into it. So as soon as you have this copy, it's a template in your system. You can actually delete this campaign if it no longer serves you, <laughs> which it wasn't meant, up, meant to be. Um, and you'll have that template so you can put it anywhere you like or use it in any way that you, that you feel. If you want to schedule it in advance or if you just want to wait till Memorial Day and send it out through your CRM. Okay. <laughs> so just wanted to give a brief explanation of how that works. And let me just double check what questions were missing in the Q&A and chat. Um, I do want to also devote a little bit of time to, to talk a bit about uh, website customization. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, those quick additions I made to my website for background, but I'm just going to double check um, again, those questions in the Q&A in the chat. So Barbara in the Q&A said, how do you find that link for home value? Okay, so your KB Core website should have a handy cell tab. Now I do want to mention the cell tab will operate differently for my Canadian users. I apologize, today's session is a little bit more geared towards our United States users. So I do want to mention uh, what you'll see from the cell tab as a Canadian user will be different than someone working in the US, but typically on your KD Core website. And if you're, again, you're brand new to KD Core, if you're not familiar how to get to your KD Core website in the upper right-hand corner where you see your name, you'll typically have a little globe icon uh, about the third or so icon down. That's how you get to your KD Core website. And again, from that website, I just clicked on my cell tab up at the top and that's the URL I used for that, that home value link. And that way I'm directing those leads to my website. And if they sign up there, you know, it's capturing any information that they've filled out. And if, again, if I'm sending this message out to contacts I already have in my CRM, if they didn't have a home valuation filled out prior, uh, what this is doing is it's getting them to sign up and that information is just going to flow into their already existing uh, KB Core profile in my CRM. So it's just kind of updating so I can see that they're starting to receive those. Oh, hmm, not in Canada and you do not have a cell tab. Okay, I apologize. I don't know why that would be as to my knowledge. I think just about all of our, if you have a KV Core website, I think all the brokerages typically have a cell tab. So I'm not sure why that wouldn't be displaying on your screen. 
you have a drop down called sellers. Um, it may be under your sellers tab. I would say uh, to my knowledge, it's usually called the sell tab, but maybe if you've been with KV core for a while or your brokerage decide to, um, you know, rename those headers, uh, that might've been the situation there. Let's also double check here in my chat. Um, let's see. And we talked about adding the template. Someone said, I have a newsletter in JPEG or PDF formats. Uh, can I upload that image and use versus using the template? Uh, yes, absolutely. You can upload your own photos. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head the exact recommended sizing. I do believe that is notated in our support articles, which again, I've included the links in my agenda. So no matter which one you're using there. And another little pro tip there, if you're creating your own template, adding in your own photo images, um, sometimes it's kind of nice if you want to really see what that looks like before sending it out maybe to all your leads. I definitely encourage, encourage all of my users, if you've not created a test lead in KD Core, add in a test lead. Um, even if you just, you know, <laughs> add, a, you know, create a test lead that is, uh, you know, maybe you just create it with your You've got a second, say, spam email or one that you use just to sign up for newsletters and things like that. Add that as a contact in your KV Core platform and test that email out by sending it to that test lead first before you send it to the rest of your leads if you really want to preview it beforehand. Um, uh, let's see, the newsletter does not have an unsubscribe option. How to add it with our IT guy. Um, yes, so you can add your own special messaging in there. I do want to mention for most tools within KV Core, you know, your users have lots of ways that they can unsubscribe. Um, KV Core does detect in a lot of instances if they say stop or unsubscribe. It can actually notice that messaging. Additionally, you can go and you can always unsubscribe a lead yourself through KV Core. So just clicking on a test lead example here in the more actions drop down on the right hand side, I can go and I can, you know, they're actually unsubscribed from emails already with this example. But if it they were previously subscribed, it would say unsubscribe to emails. And here we can see I can unsubscribe them from text. So you can manually do that. I'll also mention when users log into your KV Core website, um, they can unsubscribe themselves completely or unsubscribe themselves from search alerts. So there are a couple different ways that you can do that. And I do believe we have support articles on that subject as well. Uh, let's see. And okay, someone jumped in a little late. I apologize, uh, Lisa, I think it was, uh, that we missed your message here for about the mass emails. <laughs> Again, uh, what I did was I went to marketing. I went to scheduled mass emails. I went to schedule an email. So just a couple of steps here. You choose who it's being sent to. And again, if you've got a copy of the template I created, again, if you went and you, you copied that campaign over to your library, you should see whenever you go to type in templates, if you type in, you know, I just type in SM. That's something that's easy for me to remember. It's SM Memorial Day template. Maybe I should add that title in there too, as well, just for some clarification. It'll be called the SM Memorial, helps if you spell it right, <laughs> Memorial Day template. Is that right? Email template. There we go. So it's easy for you guys to find after you've made a copy of it. And again, you'll be able to just kind of pull that up and to make your adjustments. Again, the big adjustment that you want to make if you're using those buttons, as I have them added here, is you want to add in your URLs for those buttons. Or if you don't want these here, if you just want the nice message, feel free to you know delete them if you want to. If you just click on a button, there's that little trash can icon. I can remove these. They're not relevant to what I want to send this out for. And Barbara, again, that uh, this template, unfortunately, I can't make it automatically available in all accounts. So you'll use that that copy sharing token and your smart campaign section 
to get a copy of that template. And remember guys, this is all recorded. If you did show up a little late, you can always catch the recording later. All right. You know, Clay, uh, about your MLS limit question, I apologize, I don't actually know the answer to that. You totally stumped me on that. So I apologize, I don't have an answer for that. Have you tried reaching out or asking our support team about this question? Because they would probably have more advice than I would on that topic. I apologize, that's not what I'm familiar with. Oh, <laughs> thank you in the chat, Matt. Yes, orientation uh, begins shortly and I will be there for orientation as well. All right. Okay, we've got a lot of background, uh, want to know about updating their websites. Oh, and if you missed it, uh, Peyton in the chat, again, the schedule mass emailer tool can be used to, uh, you know, send an email to all your contacts. I know the CRM limits you, you know, 250 at a time, which it's not too hard. You just set it to the first 250 and then skip to the next page. But you could also use the schedule mass email option if you want to email everybody at once and just choose all the statuses. So another little workaround for you guys. All right. And good suggestion as well. Cloning yourself a copy of that newsletter template, especially if it's one that you're going to want to use again. Um, do, 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 do. The link to the materials again. Okay. So let me go ahead and pop the agenda in the chat one more time. And then because of the time that we're talking about, because I did promise to talk a little bit about website updates and we are hearing requests, I am hearing requests for that in the chat. That's what I'll talk about next. And then time allowing, we can discuss smart campaigns as well for, for art in the chat. All right, one more time. Here is the agenda going in the chat. You should be able to click that link and should pop open on your screen. I will also make sure, you know, to post this uh, when the video, uh, when the recording is accessible. Um, we'll post it on the YouTube channel. I'll try to post it in our Facebook group as well. And I'll make sure to include a link to this agenda there as well. If for some reason you're having issues, clicking it in the chat. But let's talk about updating our websites for the holiday as well. So any KV Core website updates, I'm heading to my Web and IDX tab. And I didn't get too intense with this website update. You could get really fancy. You could add in custom pages, uh, maybe showcase local holiday events. Um, you could blog about it. All great ways to add SEO value um, to your site. But I just had a little fun with changing the overall appearance of my website for Memorial Day. And to do so, I went to Web and IDX and I went to my edit settings option. Now, really quick and easy, you could just change, say, your theme color. So if I go ahead to my KV Core website, I've chosen kind of a navy blue for the holiday. So you see all these little kind of banners in between that search button there, the buttons as they hover over areas. That is that theme color that's showcasing. And for those of you out there with custom, say, WordPress sites, just know that some of these features might work a little differently for you. Now, I could just add in a background image if I wanted to. And I will mention when you're uh, adding in your own background image, I'm not sure if we have a pre-added one that is kind of holiday theme. Most of these are just houses. My head, I thought I was remembering one that had a flag, but I think I'm thinking of landing pages here. Yeah. So you could upload your own Memorial Day image if you just want one single image. Um, there's pros and cons to both. I know some people think having a YouTube video, you know, definitely very attention grabbing, but I will mention for users out there with maybe really slow internet access, it can take a little bit longer to sometimes load that home page of your website. So I know. Lots of our users, lots of agents that update, prefer to update their websites with just a single image. So you could do that too. You'll see right here before you even, you know, click to upload an image, um, we give you the exact dimensions that we recommend for those photo images. 
And you can, you know, if you have your own handy, you know, flag or Memorial Day photo handy, you can just go and upload it there. It's also pretty easy to find free stock images online. I did make some suggestions in my webinar agenda for tools like um, Unsplash and Pexels are great ones to use for free stock images. And you can just search for images, search by, you know, Memorial Day photos, flag photos, uh, remembrance. There's a couple different, you know, kind of keywords you can use to find those very easily. And you can upload it in. When you've uploaded a photo, it should typically, I'll show up here and it'll show a little check mark that you have selected that photo. I do want to mention if you had a different photo previously selected and you just want that one image that you've just uploaded, you'll probably want to deselect the other photo because every time you go to refresh your website, it'll usually change that background image if you've got multiple selected here. Now for the YouTube video, uh, there's a different area where I'd add in a YouTube video. And I will mention if you have added in the link to a YouTube video, it's going to prioritize that YouTube video over a background image. So you'll notice I have a check mark next to this background image, but it's displaying the video instead. So it's always going to prioritize the video if you have that added. So very important to note if you decide you want to take this video down in the future, you'll have to go back to your WebNIDX, back to your website settings and remove that link. Now, website settings, if I scroll down here, there's a lot in website settings to search for. I could keep scrolling until I find the area where it allows me to add in a YouTube link. Um, but a little pro tip, if you haven't heard this before, I'm a big fan on, you know, you can use this everywhere. It's, it's not new news or anything. It's not KV course specific. But I find for this page in particular, it's really easy to click Control F and just type in YouTube here um, in the search bar to make it easier to find, to jump to that area of the search page. So under the template section is where you'll find background video YouTube ID. This is where I'd pop in the YouTube ID to a video that I want for my website background. So what I did was I went to YouTube and again, it does have to be a YouTube video as the name implies here. And I typed in Memorial Day flag free stock video. Um, free stock video is always a good idea there. Um, you know, so you're not necessarily just stealing other people's stuff. If you have your own video, that's even better, um, especially if you maybe not for the holiday, but maybe you've got a video of you walking through a listing uh, and you've got it posted a video, you could add that as your background. But I do want to mention if you're using someone else's video, you are kind of at that mercy. If this person ever decided to take this video down, um, it would break the link. Okay. But to grab this, what you really need is the YouTube ID. You can find it in the URL. So I find that's a little bit harder to find. Uh, what I find is usually pretty easy for me to determine the correct uh, YouTube ID is underneath the video, so I've got my video up here, um, is to click the little share button. And I don't need this whole share link. I just want this code after the backslash. And I'll try to make this a little bit bigger for you guys, because I'm sure that's a little hard to see. And just for fun, I'll post this, this YouTube ID code in the chat as well. So I just highlighted that YouTube ID code. And I'm going to go back to my KV core platform back to where the background video YouTube ID box is and paste it in there and click save. After I've saved this, I should be able to go to my KV core website and just refresh it. And that background video should load up again, depending on your internet could take a couple could take a little bit of time to load up for very slow internet services. But there we go. That's a background video. Another little pro tip might be helpful to set yourself a little reminder that after the holiday is over to go and change your background image or your background video after the fact. Um, so that way it's not still there after Memorial Day is over. 
All right, so just a little bit I wanted to share about updates for the KD Core website. With the time remaining, let me double check what we missed in the chats. And let's see. I'm sorry, it looks, sounds like we're having some confusion about using the template. Uh, about adding a campaign, choosing a trigger hashtag, is that right? So let me let me go back and we'll walk through that again. And then let's just double check in the Q&A as well. Um, started a smart campaign with many tasks. However, when I assign the smart campaign to a contact, the tasks are not created under the contact. Is that normal? Mm, that doesn't sound correct because the tasks should be specific to the lead that you're assigning that smart campaign to. That sounds a little bit buggy, but it may just be the way that I'm reading your message here. Um, Art, I might double check that you, I might recommend that you reach out to our support team about that if the tasks are not showing that they're assigned to a specific contact, because they should be. Hmm. I mean, you're the one who's going to be notified to follow up with those tasks, uh, but it should tell you which lead that task is associated with. So I'm not sure why that's happening the way that is. That sounds abnormal. But let me quickly, and I know we, we it even looks like we might have had some more people jump in as I've been talking here. So let me just double check here. Um, let's run through that one more time, kind of from grabbing the template to how to use it. So I mentioned with that template in the marketing tab here, if you head on over to your smart campaigns, you should be able to copy that sharing token that I've got here in, in my uh, webinar agenda. And I would go and I would copy that. We'll head to KD Core. And in my smart campaigns, just to the right of where I would add a campaign is a little copy button. Oh, I'm gonna close that out. <laughs> little copy button. I know it doesn't say copy on it, but I promise you that's the copy button. <laughs> so you go and click on it and it's gonna ask me to enter a campaign token to copy. And I pop that in there and I should be able to clone the campaign. You should see a message says this process can take up to 15 minutes to complete and you'll receive an email once this campaign is in your account. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, it doesn't like that token, probably because I already have the campaign in my account. Uh, please let me know if you're doing this process and it's telling you the token is no longer valid because it should be valid for you guys. Again, I already have this campaign in my account, so that's probably why it's not working properly. Now, once you have that campaign in there, you don't need to use the campaign. It's not meant to be a campaign. What it should be doing is once it's added to your system is it should be available in your template section. So I added the name of the template here specifically, it's called SM Memorial Day email template. So if you were to browse your templates, uh, specifically your email templates and type in SM, you could type in the full word or just SM, um, and you should see an SM Memorial Day email template visible there. Now you can clone this if you wanna make your own copy, make your own edits to that. Um, or additionally, you can use that template anywhere you wanna use templates in KB Core. I gave the example from the smart CRM. I could you know, send this out. Oh, I was using the URL, not the token. No worries, I'm glad we figured that out. <laughs> so hopefully everyone's on the same page. Thank you for uh, for anyone who saw that that walkthrough more than once. I just want to make sure that we're all getting the right advice. So I apologize if I skipped over that a little fast and didn't make it crystal clear. All right. So since we have that figured out, Art, let's talk a little bit about campaigns with future touches. Uh, so let me go and filter, or, you know, I know I have a test lead in here that's on a campaign. Let's pull myself up here. All right, that test lead coming in handy. Let's open her up. And I've got them already on a, or myself already on a smart campaign here. So we can see on the right hand side as I scroll down that they're on a campaign. And yes, future touch points is going to show me 
any future touches in that campaign that have not yet um, been used. Now, this one, I apologize, is not a great example as this campaign, the default new lead buyer campaign is mostly calls and emails and text messages. So I'm actually gonna change this. Let's remove this and I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna add in say our active buyer campaign. If you're not familiar with the different campaigns that KB Core has pre-created for you, campaigns for active leads, um, for your current clients, for people in a contract will typically just have reminders for you to check in with them. Once that person has reached out to you, you figured out what they're actually looking for in a home or how seriously they're looking, it, it's really up to you to kind of customize what responses you want them to receive. The pre-created campaigns for your, uh, your sphere, your new leads, your closed clients, those in KV Core have messages that are kind of a generic enough, they're useful for those groups of contacts. But once they're kind of in that active stage or they're currently your client, you probably know how you wanna be speaking to that person. This is specific to kind of what they're looking for, what their needs are, how they like to be communicated with. So it's gonna create tasks to remind you. Now here in my future touch points, you know, there's no name, there's no lead name associated with it, but I'm in, a lead profile. So we can assume all these tasks have been designed for this lead specifically. Um, now, additionally, other places where you'll see when you have tasks, um, you'll have notifications up here at the top, this little check mark in the upper right hand corner. Looks like I've got quite a few incomplete tasks. Tis, tis, don't be like me. I'm just kidding. I always leave those in my demo account just for an example here. And most of my tasks are, you know, we've got a lot of calls here. We see that little call symbol here. And then I have some check-ins. Those are just tasks for me to check in. And you should see above the check-in the name of the leads. That's how it should function. Another place where you can check in on your tasks is on the main dashboard in KV Core. Um, right above kind of where your activity stream is here, we've got our calls and tasks. And if I go click on tasks, again, I don't have any due today, but I've got plenty of past due ones. Uh, I should see again, the contact, which it's associated with same with my upcoming as well. We can see the contact it's associated with. So that's how it should appear in your account. Um, if you're noticing those tasks don't look like they're assigned to a lead, that sounds a little bit buggy to me and I might report that to support. All right. Um, I think if there's any other questions about Kiwi Core, about what we talked about here today, feel free to pop those in the Q&A or chat. I know we're running towards the end of our time here, so we're gonna be wrapping up shortly. Uh, Barbara is so excited to watch the, the recording already. So it typically takes, um, you know, depends on on zoom sometimes it takes a half hour takes sometimes it takes an hour to render i do want to mention you know uh, about a half hour from now i'm going to be teaching another webinar so i won't be able to go back and retrieve that recording right away uh, but i would give it probably roughly about two or so hours from now i will update this agenda if you grab the agenda and you go back, I will update in about two hours, I'll tell you, um, is usually when I'll go back and I'll update this recording link. So I'll make sure the agenda has a recording link here. So you can just go click into it to catch this recording if you missed any and you want to rewatch. And if, you know, if you didn't grab the agenda or if you're not worried about grabbing the recording right away, again, we do post them to YouTube. Uh, I will say the timeline for when they get added to YouTube can vary. Sometimes it gets added to YouTube same day. Sometimes it gets added later in the week. But that's why I always try to um, include it in my little agenda here. All right. Uh, that's all I have for you guys here today. <laughs> One last time in case anyone missed it. Let's pop this agenda in the chat, shall we? There we go. Link going down. Again, I apologize that I'm not, you know, emailing directly out the recording and I won't have the recording until it renders through Zoom. But again, if you're grabbing the agenda, it should show up there within a couple hours.
Thanks everyone for joining. I hope you all have a fabulous uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I hope these tools are helpful to you and you use it to customize your KV course sites. And I'll see you next week probably for our next success meetup. Or if you're head to orientation, I'll see you there in like half an hour. Take care. <laughs>